People got to see this. This is top-notch content. Tip of the cap. Thank you, sir. I do appreciate it. Let's try this again. Welcome to the stream, everybody. Hope y'all are having a great Saturday night. I've been busy, busy boy, getting all this stuff set up. We're currently in my garage. Obviously, I live in Texas, so it's hotter than balls in here, sweaty balls. Uh, but we got a huge, huge night in store, lots of fun to go about, and let's not beat around the bush. What we're doing is we're going to be doing a little case mod. So I was digging through, some, not my attic, I was digging through some of my boxes, you know, you, you move to a new house, you got boxes, y'all know what I'm talking about. And I saw this bad boy, and luckily I still have all the cables for it, and I plugged it in and it boots up and it reads memory cards, but the problem is, sorry, get that light. The problem is the, the, the CD-ROM doesn't read correctly. Like it'll, it'll detect the disc, but it won't read the disc, which really sucks. Uh, but beyond that, you know, this thing works fine. It's got the functioning memory card hinges. It's got functioning ports. Awesome, we're still good. It's got functioning buttons. The disc drive still ejects and everything. USB ports down at the bottom. And of course we got the back here. Uh, you know, it gets power, obviously. So all in all, it's still a functioning PlayStation 2. The only downside is I can't use it. So rather than throw it into the junk pile, we're gonna put it to pasture. We're gonna slap in some really cool hardware. This is the ASRock Desk Mini A300. You might think to yourself, dude, this is a really, really small computer, and you're absolutely right. This thing is tiny. We're gonna open it up. We're gonna do a quick little unboxing. I've already, uh, spoiler alert, I've already opened this. I've actually already installed Windows on this machine. Uh, but before we get to the actual computer, there's actually not that much inside the box, which is kind of nice. Usually companies slap a whole bunch of stuff. But one of the most critical parts to a small form factor build is the heatsink fan. This is tiny. Look at that. It's probably like an 80 millimeter fan. And it's probably like an inch thick. It's, it's very small. But this is the little dinky ass heatsink. I, it kind of upsets me that they put this small of a heatsink into their product. But, you know, at least they provide you one and don't say, oh, good luck finding one. It does use a PWM connector, really useful, especially with builds like this where, you know, fan control and temperature control can be a real challenge, even inside of this box, which we're gonna look at here now. And inside is the system. Uh, just for size comparisons, that's my cell phone. This is the A300 Desk Mini. It is tiny, tiny, tiny super small, probably nine by nine, nine inches by nine inches. And then that's the front. It's a very uh, unassuming front side. Uh, we do have a power, a single power button. There is no reset button. We've got two jacks, audio jacks. One's a headset, one's a mic. That's what it is. One headset, one mic. And then we've got a USB 3.0 and then a type C connector, which is cool. I think that's USB-C as well, or uh, 3.0. We'll have to double check in the UFE. Uh, but let's open this guy up. Let's see what, we, see what we're working with. Uh, just in case y'all didn't know, I am a hardware reviewer with Tom's Hardware, and my senior editor, Thomas, he actually reviewed this unit. So if you're kind of curious how well this thing performs with whatever hardware you're looking to build this system. Uh, I would definitely recommend checking out that article. So let's swap back over. So what we did 
We took the back of the machine. It has four screws that uh, basically open up the motherboard tray. And what I love about it is it just slides out. Isn't that freaking cool? It's super convenient. This little header is really convenient. It's gonna save us a lot of time. This is the header that connects the uh, front panel, USB, power, as well as some of the LEDs. But yeah, that's all it is, is you've got this well-ventilated shell. And you can see here, they actually have like the mounting uh, brackets. But yeah, that's this is the chassis it comes in. It's, it's super small, nothing to ride home to mom about. And I love that this is all wired out to a connector and the connector is readily, easily readable. So it's gonna make our job modding this really easy. And also, this little front panel right here, we could probably cut something similar into the PlayStation like this. So just plop it straight in, hopefully. So inside, you'll see this. This is the motherboard. And you'll be wondering, you know, what the heck kind of motherboard is this? It's not a mini ITX. You'll see uh, down here, there is no PCIe connector, so we can't run dedicated graphics, which you might think, oh, that sucks. Well, that's where this bad boy comes in. Right now we're running a, sorry if the autofocus is off. Uh, we're running a 2400G. This is the, the best of the best for now. The goal is once the, Ryzen 3000 series processors come out. We're just gonna plop it in here. I think I already uploaded the latest BIOS on it, so it should support it. But we're just gonna throw the other processor in here, and bada bing, bada boom, we're gonna have a pretty kicking system. Uh, processor is not included with the system, so you know, you've been warned. So what's cool about this is, it, since it's so compact, right, if, if you've ever built with a mini ITX case, it's all about maximizing vertical clearance to fit stuff in. I hope this doesn't screw up my Windows installation. I just like installed the latest 1903 uh, Windows update and all that. But what they did on this bot on this build is there's a spot for the probably can't read it. Uh, there's a spot for the M.2 Wi-Fi, and that's kind of closer to the board further down on the camera. And then above it is the SSD. So that's where, you know, you put your primary NVMe drive. And I think there's a second NVMe. We'll, we'll be taking this off here in a little bit, uh, but there's a second NVMe slot on the back. So if you were concerned about, you know, storage capacity, this, this thing's got you covered. You don't really have to worry about it too bad. And now, you know, NVMe prices are starting to drop. You know, capacities are starting to increase. You know, I, I've got a 250 gig Samsung Evo in here, which is, you know, not too great. But, you know, I'm not gonna be loading uh, Red Dead Redemption 2. I'm not gonna be putting any massive games on here. You know, it might play Fortnite, it might play Doom. So yeah, I mean, if, a 250 gig hard drive is just fine. 512 even better. Uh, so that's the storage uh, built into the board. Uh, fun fact, and I actually don't know where it plugs in. Well, we might have to bring it up later, but there are SATA plugs on this system. You can plug in SATA uh, hard drives. I think they're on the back side. Yeah, they're on the backside. We'll we'll look at them here in a little bit. Uh, but from a from a storage perspective, this thing is loaded, and you probably could even mount. Yeah, on the bottom there's actually 2.5 inch uh, disc slots that you can mount uh, either spinning discs or SSDs to it. So so moving along, uh, we've got our front panel ports here. We mentioned those earlier. This is our memory. So they're little bitty laptop sticks. They're called SODIMMs, S-O-D-I-M-Ms, for those uninitiated. And I was got in contact with Corsair last week, and they were kind enough to send me 
two eight gigabyte sticks of DDR4 3000. These guys are phenomenal. And I actually, before I <laughs> was rushed to get into the stream, these things overclocked to 3200, no problem. I, I initiated the XMP profile and then just told it to go to 3200. These things run fine. And since we're running the Ryzen processors, everyone gloats and says, oh, you got to run faster memory speeds. The IGP needs it. IGPU. So, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll hop on that bandwagon. So we're, we went ahead and got pretty dang good memory for this thing. I love it. It's pretty cool. Uh, we do have two fan headers, which I think we're only going to have access to one for now. I don't think I have the ability to put another fan that'll actually do anything into this build. Um, but we also got some more USB ports here on the bottom right, uh, your bottom left. Uh, there's a clear, clear CMOS jumper, some other jumper. Uh, trying to see if there's anything else that's fun for you guys to see. Uh, honestly, that's about it. You know, for such a small board, there just isn't a lot here. We can talk about the back panel though. So this is kind of a slimmer, it's not as girthy, but it's the same like height as a standard back panel, but it's really, really small. Uh, this is our DCN. This is what helps us save so much room in our case. Since we don't have to pack a power supply in here, we just use an external brick and we can power this thing. I think, uh, the system supports up to 65 watt processors. Don't quote me on it. You'll have to pull up the details uh, somewhere else. But this is what's going to make us cram all of this goodness into such a small chassis. We got display port. I believe it's 1.3. Again, I don't have the spec sheets on hand, but uh, I wouldn't count on driving 4K off of display port. S similar story with the HDMI. I don't see us running 4k 60. Uh, we do have a VGA output just in case. We got gigabit ethernet so we still do have a connection to the internet because I don't have a Wi-Fi card. And we got two USB ports on the back panel. So that's the front side. Let's take it apart. Uh, another downside to this build is it uses some pretty beefy screws which you know, on the surface doesn't seem like a big deal. But when you're trying to cram all this stuff into such a small space, you do have to mind your clearances. And I don't have access. <laughs> I can't see that screw. Ah. And of course, my magnet on this screwdriver is not that good. So here we go. Oh, yeah, I'm doing fine, man. I've been a busy boy. I've been getting the stream ready, taking care of the kiddos, all that fun stuff. So that's our motherboard tray. We will use that for the build. And then that's the back. Cool, huh? So we got our standard uh, AM4 backplate, which is super nice. Like I mentioned earlier, we have the second M.2 slot. I want to say that that is SATA or a by two PCIe, so it's not. This isn't the full length, full fledged uh, NVMe drive. So if you're going to do anything there, I would stick to the lower uh, bandwidth ones. And then I don't know if you can see it because of the the autofocus is off, but these little ports up here, that's where the little SATA headers connect. There's a couple of SATA cables that came with the box, but they like latch in here, and since you know, SATA drives don't take a lot of power. You know, they don't have to pump too much voltage or current through there, and the wattage might support that connector. So we can connect some pretty cool stuff to this. Boom, knocked to a came and saved the day. They provided me with this bad boy. This is the L9A AM4, super duper small heatsink fan. As always, when you get knocked to a product, super high quality. Ah, there's actually thermal grease. We might use that. Popping that off, we get our ugly brown fan. 
And then this is gonna be the meat of the heat sink. But look at that, look at all that clearance. It's so much smaller than what I was gonna use, but, uh-oh. Never fun to say uh-oh in the middle of the stream, right? When I did my measurements, this was gonna fit perfectly. Yeah, it should be fine. Uh, I might have to rotate it like that in order to not touch the NVMe. Oh my God, that's gonna be super tight. <laughs> I thought it was gonna be a little taller. Whew. Yes, this heatsink will work. It's just got a little four pin fan header right here. That's like super tightly you know, plugged in right here. But this will be what cools our machine. We won't be able to overclock if at all with that, but granted this won't even let me overclock. Uh, but what we're gonna do, we're gonna take the guts of that original PlayStation and we're gonna be putting this system in it. This is gonna be a Ryzen 2400G. This is their uh, you know, first gen APU. Oh, D Smitty with the host, thank you, sir. Uh, but this is the APU, it's got the, uh, what, before Navi, what was the one before it? Um, I'm drawing a blank. Vega, it's got the Vega APU uh, GPUs on it. It's got four cores, eight threads. It boosts up to like 3.7 gigahertz. So, I mean, it's a pretty potent, you know, machine. And it's so tiny, it's about nine inches by nine inches. But this is gonna be a quick, a pretty freaking cool build. Uh, I did confirm this boots. I went ahead and installed Windows on the NVMe drive. It actually overclocks the memory up to 3200 megahertz. Uh, we did get the memory, special thanks to Corsair. Uh, appreciate you guys always sending me stuff when I request nicely. But that's gonna be the build. So if y'all got questions or comments about the build or how we're gonna do this, you know, let me know in chat. I'm definitely up for talking and discussing these things. Um, I will say, there will be power tools. Uh, we'll talk about this here in a bit, but we're gonna have to do some modifications to this uh, motherboard plate. That's gonna make things a lot easier. We're gonna be doing some drilling because I don't know how this is constructed. I don't know what's in here. I We're just gonna kind of start tearing it apart and see what happens. Uh, one, hey Ghost, how's it going dude? One consideration we do have to keep in mind is we will be upgrading the CPU. So we've got some epoxy. I didn't bring the hot glue gun out. I don't think we'll need it, but I will need to keep in mind, I'd need to be able to open this or at least pull it apart so I can put the new uh, processor in there. Supposedly they're 65 Watts as well. So it shouldn't be a power consumption problem, but that's why we're in the garage. It's hot as balls in here, but It'll be worth it, I promise. Uh, 